Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn what is manual testing. Now, as the name suggests, manual testing is the testing that is done manually. So if you are working in a software testing team and you are working or you are trying to test any software with the manual efforts without the help of any scripts, automation tools, etc., then that sort of testing is known as manual testing. Now, in the previous tutorial, we have already covered about the software testing. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial in the series, please go ahead and watch those because they will help you a lot in understanding the core concepts of software testing and how to apply those concepts into real world, as well as how to you know, apply those concepts to crack the software testing interviews. Now, coming back to manual testing, basically, so uh, when you are starting any application testing or um, any software that you are trying to test, the first and foremost type of testing that you will do is the manual test, right? Now, if I talk about the categorization of testing, so, you know, broader way or broader categorization into testing is one uh, type is the manual testing which we'll understand and then second one is automation right so automation and manual now manual testing is uh, the first you know category that you will target so any application that you test you do the manual testing first and ensure that manual test cases or, or the test cases that you try to run manually pass properly and there are no outstanding defect, then you go to that second category and use the tools and scripts or programming language to automate those test cases. All right. So these are two broader categories um, that you can, you know, think of in software testing. Manual is uh, the testing that you do manually. Automation is the testing that you do with the help of tools that are available to automate, right? So for example, if you are using, uh, you know, web, uh, if you are trying to automate web application, you can use Selenium, which is very widely used, right? So this is uh, a brief about uh, the manual testing. Now let's understand the overall process that any tester will follow in the overall testing life cycle, right? Or the development life cycle. So it doesn't matter basically which software development approach you are following. The steps that I'm so showing you here to perform the manual testing will still remain same. So whether it's waterfall, whether it's V model, or whether it's Scrum or Agile, Agile Scrum, it will still be same. All right. So the first phase in the manual testing is basically to analyze the requirement or you know whatever requirement a customer will provide you. You basically, as a tester, you analyze those requirement and try to find out any gaps if there are any in the requirement right so the first step is to um, analyze requirements all right so when we say analyze requirement you basically read through the requirement you understand the requirement and then you try to um, understand what all scenarios might be possible or you might be trying to test to ensure that the requirement is being covered, right? So say, for example, um, I take an example of an e-commerce application, right? So e-commerce application will have add cart, remove, add item to cart, remove item to cart, right? So add item to cart can be one of the requirement, right? And then second requirement could be remove item from cart, okay? So when you get the requirement which says something, you know, build me an application or build me, build me an um, e-commerce website wherein I have the functionality to add item to cart. Now, as a tester, you go through these documentation that what all functionalities will be there. Uh, then you analyze those requirements and understand that what testing you will do with those requirements. So you come up with, the, with those, those understanding that if there are any gaps in the requirement, you basically put or provide your feedback to the team and to the business. All right. So analyzing requirement is the very important aspect or the first phase of the manual testing. 
then the next come is the test you know planning phase okay so once you understand the requirement the next phase is basically to plan how you are going to test all the requirements that you have got right so in the test plan phase you write the plan or you basically understand and uh, brainstorm the planning phase and you write the overall plan now if you are following waterfall or v model those model are uh, you know uh, run for quite a long period of time then in that case you write a detailed test plan master test test plan and then phase phase level test plan but if most of the organizations nowadays follow scrum uh, which is a dial uh, methodology then in that case you have shorter iterations so two to four week cycle in which you write a very simple crisp plan that how you are going to target the set of requirements that you have got uh, for that particular sprint so don't worry about all these terms sprint and all i'll explain that uh, in you know like further lectures when i go into the scrum methodology uh, in detail so you the next phase is around the test plan so test plan is written uh, so it doesn't matter which methodology you are following you have to basically prepare accordingly uh, then comes the test design all right or you design the test cases test case design so you write the test cases so i'll simply say uh, you know test case creation all right so test case creation now in test case creation what you do is you come up with the scenarios and create the test cases into tools say for example if you are using jira with some test management add on you create the test cases within jira right or if you are using any other test management tool you create the test cases for the requirements that you have got so that there is a coverage of the requirement or there are test cases against those requirement that you are going to run all right the fourth phase is the execution so once you have the requirements once you have analyzed those once you write the test cases um, you know like you have planned uh, how you are going to test then you execute the test cases so the next phase is execution execution all right or test execution um, i'll write test execution Okay, so in the test execution phase, you, that's when you actually start executing, right? So what execution means is once your, uh, you know, uh, developers have actually deployed the code. Say, for example, they have uh, written the code to add the item to cart and remove the item to cart. So that code is, you know, written to add the features into the e-commerce website. That code will be deployed into the test environment. Once the code has been deployed and you are being notified, then you start the test execution. In test execution, what you will do is you will launch the application manually because this is manual testing that we are trying to understand. You will launch it manually in any browser, Chrome or Firefox or I, whatever supported browsers are. And then you will try to add items into the cart. Say, for example, it's a grocery store or any, you know, like clothing store. Then you add those you know item into the cart and then try to remove the item so you execute the test cases whatever you have written in that particular uh, feature uh, the next thing with the execution say for example a uh, couple of test cases passed that's fine but say for example a couple of test cases failed so what you do is if the test case get failed then you raise the defect all right or bug so defect or bugs. So in software testing, defect or bug is something which um, is not what is expected when you execute the test cases, right? So any uh, discrepancy in what you are expecting as part of the test case will be logged in as defect or also known as bug. Once that defect has been logged, it is assigned to the developer. Again, developer fixes it and then it comes back to you you retest that defect and you basically either if, if the retest passes you close the defect and finally if all the test cases have passed then you at the last stage 
either all the test cases passed or no defects are there or whatever open defects are there are being agreed by the stakeholders that yes these are fine these are not very critical defect we can do the release or we can deploy the code even with these defect and we'll we'll take these defects in the next iteration or next phase all right then you come to the test reports so this is another phase right so these are some of the key phases now in the test report reporting what you do is you prepare the report now if you're following scrum because scrum is two to four week cycle very short iterations or sprints in that case you don't need to keep preparing these reports or nowadays the tools available for example jira uh, you will get most of the time you know just have to write a filter and you will get reports available uh, you know dynamically on the dashboard all right so the reports for each sprint will be available dynamically for the sprint if you're following scrum but if you're following you know b model or waterfall model which i'll cover in detail in later tutorials then in that case you have to write the formal you know like test exit report and all which will cover all the details or all the testing that has been done in the whole process now because waterfall approach usually runs for six to you know six months and it can run up to you know like two years nowadays i have rarely seen any organization following the waterfall approach but there are still organizations that do follow waterfall so in that particular case if that duration is long you have to basically prepare the documentation as you know the, the duration is longer in scrum because the duration is very you know, less two to four weeks iteration so you don't have to prepare that those lengthy reports right so these are some of the key phases of the manual testing and how you are going to basically do manual testing in any of the project right in any of the project in any of the development approach the steps of manual testing how you coordinate with the team member and the business and business analyst still remains exactly same whether you follow scrum whether you follow waterfall or whether you are following v model all right so the only difference becomes here is in terms of the duration and in scrum it is more of a collaborative team work and the quality is everyone's responsibility in scrum and in agile but in the older approaches uh, waterfall and v model it was basically a phased approach and that is why testing was always a test team's responsibility so it's basically a mind shift change in agile and scrum which that is why uh, there is more collaboration when you are analyzing the requirement as a tester you sit together with the team with the business analyst uh, with the developers to understand the overall aspect and then proceed through the testing as the others go along with the development so it's very collaborative working culture in scrum as compared to waterfall and v model all right so that is a brief about uh, what exactly is manual testing and what are the key phases into the manual testing and how you are going to perform manual testing in any of the project or um, any development approach that you are going to follow so hope this was helpful and hope it is clear please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching